Now this is another point of joyful victory. How to have victory over all sins. Now many people think it's too hard to overcome all sins. Who can have no sins? You know, there are some people who talk to me like that. No one is sinless. So if you say we can overcome the sins, you are a hypocrite. Because you cannot be perfect. Now this is a lie. Because we are not perfect doesn't mean we don't work on overcoming the sins. You know, working on overcoming the sins doesn't make us hypocrites. Even though we're not perfect. But there is a big difference. Let me say this. When people live in sin and hatred and anger and greed and hurting people, all this is intentional sin. And it would destroy the life. Intentional. Intentional. But Christians, even when we do good, we still have sins. For instance, when we pray, sometimes when we pray, we doubt whether God will hear the prayer. Sometimes we still have doubts. And then when we help people, sometimes we are impatient. Would the people listen to me? Would the people change? Or sometimes we get frustrated. These people don't listen to me. So even when we serve God, now think of Sunday when you come to church. Sometimes you are in a rush. Hurry up, hurry up, get everything ready. So there's, there is uh, this rushy, rushing spirit, the yeah, spirit yeah. to be everything done quickly. quickly. Or ah, I have to preach. Will the people change? Will the people listen to me? There is a worry. Or in a, some, or sometimes, oh, the people don't come yet. Oh, when will they come? Oh, I don't feel happy. Let me ask you, when we serve God, do we have negative feelings like this creeping up? Do we have negative thinking and yeah, feelings yes, creeping yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. So, are our good works perfect? Can we say that our prayer is perfect? No. no. Our teaching is perfect? No. Our goodness is perfect? No. But when we have these failures, that this, you know, sin, we call this, uh, that good works tainted with sin. Some, you know, uh, some sins stuck to the good, good works. But when we ask God to forgive us, God will accept our good works and reward us. It's very different from people intentionally sinning, hurting people, stealing from people, having sex with, with other people, so these are act, uh, intentional sin. But when we follow God, and then when we're not perfect, and we ask God to forgive, God is happy to forgive us. So don't say that. Christians still have sin. It's the same as people outside. They are committing all kinds of sin. It's different, right? But it doesn't make us perfect. We're not perfect. The point is, can we overcome the sins? Can we overcome the sins? Can we have victory? I want to say this. In the past, before the infilling of the Holy Spirit, I have allowed sins to stay in me in a number of ways. I have overcome certain sins, but I have allowed certain sins to stay in me until I experience the Holy Spirit. Wait until, wait until, oh, right. yeah, okay. But wait until uh, I tell you the points, but not, not uh, you, you don't have to right now, thank you. Okay, now, after experience the Holy Spirit, I saw that the relationship with God is so beautiful. I can experience His joy, His love, His peace anytime, His power, and I can pray for people, people's life are changed, and then God moves in my heart to tell me. So now you see that the relationship with me is so enjoyable. And you can have so much power to bless people. So treasure that life. Treasure the spiritual life and don't sin anymore. Because sin will destroy. In John 5.14. John 5.14. At the end it says that stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So when we sin, something bad and something worse can happen to us because sin will give way to Satan. And Satan can attack me in many ways. For instance, 
you have a fight with your wife. Many things can happen. You are angry with the wife and then you step out and see a beautiful girl. You can have, you, you have so much anger and then you have sex with this girl. And then it destroys your whole marriage, right? When you have sinned. And then the wife is angry and then she might smash the things in the home or hit the children and also it causes destruction. So any kind of sin will open the way to destruction in all ways, in our relationship with God, in our heart, in our relationship with people. It destroys everything. And also, um, Galatians 6, 8. Galatians 6, 8. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. So if we reap, if we sow according to the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. I have no Christians. Christians. They cannot stay long in a job because they never concentrate in the work. They're lazy and they are fired. And then they get another job, they fire again. And then they have a girlfriend and they yell at the girlfriend and the girlfriend run away. And then one day he get married, and then he yells the wife, the wife runs away. And he might have a child, and the child runs away with the wife. And then he find no job, and then he become like a beggar. And then he try to steal money, and then he is caught by the police. So his whole life is destroyed, one by one. Everything destroyed one by one. Have you seen people like that? Yes. Some people, they have no friend, no job, no money, no health, no happiness, but they say they believe in Jesus. But they just don't live the Christian life because people have this misconception. They believe in Jesus, everything will be right. That's not true. We believe in Jesus and let Jesus be the king and then everything will go right. If Jesus is not the king, things will not go right. So since always have destruction. The point is that, wow, we all have sins, many sins. How can we overcome that? How can we avoid that? The first way, the first way is always confession of our sin. Yes, Lord, I've sinned against you. I'm truly sorry. And the key to victory over sin is hatred of sin. Write this down, hatred of sin. Hatred of sin. Have you, have you heard of people who take drugs and the whole life is destroyed? Have you heard of that? Have you seen pictures of people who take drugs and how the body is destroyed by drugs? Have you seen those pictures? Some people, they lose all the teeth, the whole face become dark and the eyes, you know, become blind and everything, the face just look like, almost like a dead man. So. Drugs can destroy a person. So we know that it's bad. And then if this person has a chance to recover, and then he will say, drugs has destroyed me before, I don't want the drug to destroy me. Then he will hate the drugs. Then he can overcome the addiction. But if he still likes the drugs, he likes the feeling, he always think about the feeling, then he'll go back to the drugs, right? So for sin, overcoming sin, the key is to hate sin. For instance, think of anger. Has it done destruction to your life? Has it caused people to dislike you? Yes. And ruin relationship? Mm -hmm. So we learn to hate the anger. Anger doesn't do any good. But it's just because at that time we feel unfair. We feel we have to do something back and then we have anger. But then if we say this is destructive, I hate it, then we can overcome it. But how can we do it? First, the close relationship with God. A close relationship with God. Have you noticed when you praise God and love God, you have more motivation to overcome sin. After you praise God, it's less likely that you yell at someone, right? After you praise God, you feel more peaceful. It's less likely that you commit sin. Now the key to overcome sin is the five steps to victory. Again, remember, number one, aware. When we are aware, I have some simple thought. 
I'm about to be angry. I'm, a, I'm angry. I'm about to blow up. I want to kick this person. I want to yell at this person. Immediately, we realize we have this sinful thought. Number two, what is it? Destructive. destructive. It's destructive. It destroys my life. For instance, look at me. Now, I have blessed many Christians, churches in different countries. But if I commit something serious, I can destroy all this. And all these people will tell each other, don't ask Pastor Yip to come anymore. So I have to guard. I have to guard it. Do you have to guard your life? Yeah. You know, a life is like a garden. When you have a garden, do you, do you let a, a pig to come in to eat the, uh, all this, everything in your garden? No way. No. So if you have a garden, you guard it. Your life will also guard it. We know it's destructive. Number three, what does the Bible say? Right. Now, some people say, he's bad at me, so I yell at him. But this is not scriptural. Now, even sometimes Christians give bad advice. Someone says, he kicked me. And then the other person said, kick him down. <laughs> That's bad advice. So we follow the biblical advice, not people's advice. Number four, we pray. I'm about to be angry. And then number five, choose to I choose to bless him. Bow at him. Thank you. I want to be nice to you. I will try to work hard on that. And I'm sorry for I've done something wrong. Now that is bending our own will. Bending our will. Willing to bend our will to follow the will of God. Let me ask you, have you had this experience? You want something. Now for instance, the girl I told you about in Hong Kong, she had, she liked this guy, but this guy really doesn't like her. But she still think about him a lot and then it caused her to have all kinds of problems. We try to counsel her. And she changed sometimes, but other times she's weak again. But the Holy Spirit spoke to her in a dream. She heard Jesus spoke to her and say, leave the guy. If not, you suffer. And so she finally decided to leave the guy. So that's God working in her life. But she has to bend her will because her will is she wants that guy. Right. Now let me ask you, have there been times that you want something and then God says, don't want it. Don't ask for it. Don't look up, don't seek that. Have you had times like that? Yeah. But then we say, no, 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 no. Because of our will. Our will is very strong. Now look at children. Have you noticed some children, when the parents take them somewhere, I don't know whether, I haven't seen that here in Africa, but I've seen that a lot in Hong Kong and other places. The parents want to take the child somewhere and the child just go like this doesn't want to walk doesn't want to go or just cry ah, ah. have you seen child yeah. children cry for no reason yeah. and then you say okay I'll give you ice cream really he doesn't cry but you don't give the ice cream he'll keep crying so this is a strong will child a strong will child start from the parents allowing the child to get anything he wants. Mm -hmm. Now, were you brought up like that? If you were brought up like that, then when you grow up, you want something. Now, one time in a place, in a country, I don't want to say what country, <laughs> country that is, we were waiting for the train, but the train was late. And there was a big man, he must be about 50 years old. And there was glass separating us from the platform. He kicked at the glass until he broke the glass and then he climbed over and went to the platform. And then later someone took him out. Maybe, I don't know where they took him, but then they must have taken him to, you know, to pay for this glass. This man is already 50 years old, but he has a strong will. I want the train now. The train is not here, I have to kick the glass. I have to climb over. So his will from childhood has always been, always the parents always do whatever he wants. So he has his strong will. So if you have a child like that, 
Now one time I went to a place, this creature is very powerful, but her son, every time she preaches or do something, she want to do something, the child just cry in the church, cry on the floor. And I talked to the, the preacher, I said, he is testing your, your rules. He's testing you. And what you can do, you tell him, you cry, I won't give it to you. You can cry as long as you want. And then I, I told her, you can put her in the room. Let, her, let him cry. Just keep crying. You just don't <laughs> de neglect him. And then you just do your thing. And then after a while, the child changed. The child knew that he cannot get what he wants by crying. And the preacher can now do, uh, do her ministry. So what I'm saying is, some of us, from childhood, our parents have let us do anything we want, or in the process of growing up, they just, whatever they want, they try to get it. They steal, they kill, they hit someone, and then they become, you know, the will become very strong, and then they cannot change. But as a Christian, if we want to change, if you want to grow as a Christian, we need to be able to bend our will and let God bend our will. Let me ask you, have you been willing to bend your will? That you want something and God wants something else and then you say, okay, I give in. I let go. I obey God. Has it happened to you? Has it happened to you many times? Let me ask you this too. When we are about to tell a lie or about to sin, and then God tell us, how long does it take for you to obey? Now for some Christians, for instance, God tell you, don't be angry with your husband or wife, but we still want to be angry. How long does it take for us to submit to God? Now some people take a long time. They will say, he's so bad, it's impossible for me to forgive him. And it would insist. But if God shows us to be angry with Him, it's bad for us. Mm -hmm. And it would destroy our Christian life. And then I say, okay, I'm willing. Let me tell you, I've trained myself that I'm willing to submit to God instantly. Instantly. There are times that I went on the mission field. Let me tell you one experience. The preacher there, the pastor there asked him, are you open to the work of the Holy Spirit? He said, yes, okay? Are you open to the work of the Holy Spirit when someone falls down when I pray for him? He said, yes. Are you open to the work of the Holy Spirit if someone cries loudly or laugh loudly? He said, yes, okay? So I said, good. I, I did not cause anyone to cry or, 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 or laugh or fall down, but some people cry and laugh and fell down. In that meeting, the power of the Holy Spirit was very strong. But after the meeting, the pastor said to me, I forgot what he said, but basically he said, he cannot accept that. Now he said he accepts that. And then now it happened and he doesn't accept that. Now in my heart, the natural tendency is to ask him, you said you accept that. How come now you don't accept it? Does it do any good? No, no. no. So I realized that he did not realize his thinking. So I just listened to him. He walked with me for a long way. He kept talking about what he cannot accept, what he uh, doesn't accept. So I listened to him. And I tried to understand what he wants and what he doesn't want. I totally did not argue with him because I know it's useless. So I bent my will, even though it was unfair, because he said he accepted it and then now he doesn't accept it. But I did not argue. It's no use. Can I argue with him? It's his church. It's no use. So I said, okay, whatever you want, I'll do. Because in that situation, I cannot change him. So it's no use for me to argue. Can you understand this? Can you understand also sometimes it's no use to argue with your husband or wife? But, you, but many people still keep arguing, right? It doesn't do any good. It just makes it worse and worse. And so when we realize it's not going to do any good, then we want to quiet down and find out why he thinks that way. Why he talks like that and how to calm him down. So that's wisdom. 
And so I'm willing to do that anytime. So anytime I have sinful thought, immediately I take care of that. That's the key. For instance, one time, there was one person, there was a pastor, and another person. The pastor introduced me to this person. And the pastor asked me to lay hand on him. And so I lay hand on him, and he accepted that. And I thought he's open to the work of the Holy Spirit. And then this person took me to meet another pastor. And then I told him, the pastor, about my ministry. My ministry is to revive Christians and churches and train people to serve God. And these people heard that he was not, he was very unhappy. He came back. He took this pastor and talked to me. He said, you said you revive people's life. You think you're better than the pastor. The pastor has a big church. So you think you're better than him, that you can revive his church? You think you're somebody? Do you think that way? When I heard that, I realized that he has a lot of frustration. And he doesn't accept the work of the Holy Spirit. And he, no use to argue with him. So just listen, listen, and then God bless you. And then he left. And then the pastor said to me, Wow, Pastor Yip, you're something. When he's yelling at you, he's saying all these things. You are just peaceful. You are not affected at all. Because I know it's useless. Because I'm willing to bend my will according to God's way. That I don't want to fight with him. I don't want to argue with him. It's no use. And then the other time, this pastor asked him to come again to try to reconcile. And I'm happy. Usually, I'm always happy. I'm always willing to apologize, always willing to say nice things, always willing to bless the other person, and then it was all reconciled. So if I had been angry in the first place, it would be hard. Can you see the importance of bending a will according to God's way? So do you want your life to go higher and higher? If you're willing that the moment you realize you have some sinful thought, you're aware and then you know it is destructive. And then, what does the Bible say? And then pray to ask for forgiveness and to give, get strength. And then number five, what? Choose to obey. Choose to obey. And I've been doing that since I experienced the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you that in some instances, I failed to overcome my sin instantly. But the more I come across that, the more I have the motivation, I must stop the sins right away. So any moment I notice I have any negative feeling, I have any fear, any worry, any kind of anger, I choose to take care of it and pray in the presence of God to be released of all these burdens and it works. By the help of those, the one who helps us, we can do all things. By the help, with the help of God, we can do all things. Okay, now let me ask you, anyone want to ask a question about overcoming certain sin? Now what I'm saying is, it is possible. What I mean is, it's possible to stop, stop the sin the moment it enters my mind. The moment it enters my mind, I take care of it. And don't let it go on. Now for many people, their sins is like this. First, they don't like someone. Next, they say something unpleasant to them. Then they did something unpleasant to them. And then they turn away from them. And they didn't realize that they're going one step after another. Step after step to go deeper into sin. For instance, someone sees a beautiful girl or a handsome guy and have the desire. And then one day there's a chance they have sex. And then they fall into sex and fall into the habit of sex. And then they cannot get out. You know, the, the more they let the will continue. Have you noticed some Christians, they get into premarital sex or sex with someone who is married or someone they should not have sex. And then you try to convince them to change, you guide them to change, they are not willing. they strong will, not willing to submit. Have you noticed people like that? Yes. So because then the will refuses to obey. Let me ask you, are you willing? To follow God totally. If you want to go higher, 
in the plan of God is not just the anointing. It's not just anointing. Some people thought, if I have the anointing, I have everything. No. We need the submission. The bending of our will according to God's way. And then your life will go higher and higher. And then you can enter God's perfect plan. Let me tell you, I know some people, uh, one person, actually I know two persons that when they pray, they went to heaven. They did not die. And one person went to heaven every time she prayed. And she can receive words from God. And that person I know, she has gone to heaven many times too, in Hong Kong. So what I'm saying is, people can enter a deep relationship with God, a close relationship with God, and can do great things for God. And this lady, who can go to heaven every time she prays, whenever she leads a meeting, she knows God's will, God's way. And then when she does it, according to God's way, the people were, they just repented and turned away to follow God and their life is changed. She said one time she went to a meeting and then God told her, the people here have committed murder. So she declared that, say that, all those who have killed people's life, come to God. Now, she did not just do this, but she lead them in a prayer and lead them to repentance. And there were many people that really repented because they have aborted their babies. That God told her, there are people here who have killed other people. So God would tell her the strategy. So if we go deeper and deeper into God's plan, we can hear from God and then we can, can be guided from God and we can go deeper and deeper and her ministry can change so many people's life. Do you want to live like that? Yes. Now, I don't have that gift, but I have the gift of training and teaching. But when you hear this training and then you teach other people, then you can be blessing other people too. Not everyone can go to heaven. People, different people have different gifts. doesn't matter. You know, I have tried. I've waited for the Lord. Waited patiently. Many times I don't hear voices like they do, but I do hear teaching of, you know, teaching from God. But I don't blame God. That's one thing I choose to do. I won't blame God. I won't say, God, why don't you give it to me? I want it. I want it. I want. I want prophetic gift. I won't say that to God. Whatever God says, I'll obey. So I'm bending my will to follow God. God gives me the teaching and the training position. That's what I follow. But I still will listen to God and try to listen to God as much as possible. So that's not insisting my way, but insisting God's way. Okay, any question about how to apply this in some of the sins you're facing? Now most of the sins are related to people. When you go home today, are you willing to be nice to your husband and wife? I give you a massage today. I give you some water. I give you a hug. I say thank you to you. I thank you, I have you, I'm so happy to have you. Are you willing to do that to your husband and wife? How many are willing? How many are willing to do something extra nice to your spouse when you go home today? Extra nice. Extra, extra nice. Well, how about the rest? Well, I thank God for the... Yes, are you asking a question or you? Okay, so I hope if you want to grow in the Lord, submit to God and whenever the sinful thought comes, when you go home, you're about to be angry. Deal with it in the mind. Yeah, right, deal with it in the mind. And also deal with it in a peaceful way. For instance, you know, I'm, I've gone through prophetic training. Now, I do hear sometimes. Not much, but I, I hope I can hear more. But I choose to submit myself and say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I don't have that strong gift, it doesn't matter. God has given me other gifts that I can bless other people. So I calm myself down to relax in God, okay? So I hope you all can, by the help of God, overcome the sins that are attacking you. Let me 
Oh. Let me share with you some of my instances that I overcome some of my sins. One time I was in a group of pastors and they were all sharing. And some pastors really have good testimonies about the ministry. I was very happy. And there was one pastor who shared. And when I heard what he said in my heart, I said, oh, that's nothing. That's not anything great. The moment I have that thought, God spoke to me. <laughs> I noticed that God speak to us for sure when we sin. <laughs> and God said to me the, in thoughts, who are you to judge? His changes were brought by me, and your changes were brought by me. Who are you to judge him? So immediately I say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to thank God for what you have done in his life. I want to appreciate him. I want to want to hear him and appreciate him so God has talked to me many times now the person who persecuted me in the traditional church and forced me leave the church there were thoughts like this one day she has to face the judgment of God maybe she will have cancer and when that thought came to me I said this is not right and God moves me to pray for her so that she'll be faithful in her way, even though she's not open to the work of the Holy Spirit. I pray that she'll be faithful in her way, that one day when she sees God, God will say, you're a good and faithful servant. So I pray, God, make her a good and faithful servant, that I want to bless her. Sometimes I walk by a church that is not doing so well, that is very weak, or oppose the work of the Holy Spirit, and then I have negative feeling. And then God spoke to me. I work in that church too. And then I pray for them. When I walk by, I pray for them. God bless them. God work in them. So I'm sharing with you how I overcome whatever that happens. Sometimes I pray for people and experience great power of God. And then I say, wow, wow, wonderful, wonderful. And then immediately God says to me, is it you who work in them? <laughs> And then immediately I say, Lord, it's you, it's you, it's not me, it's not me. Lord, take away everything, every pride. It's your work, it's your work, it's your work. So every time when I pray for people, I convince myself it's not me. Do not be proud. Do not be, now I can be happy, but do not be proud of my, you know, the gifts or the anointing. So God has handled my sins in different ways, all different ways. But some people, you know, some people say, when you see a person in the first three seconds, you kind of decide your relationship with him. When you see some people, you kind of feel, well, this person is a very slow person. He's not a smart person. And then sometimes we say, I don't want to make friends with this person. I don't want to care about this person. Has this happened to you? Yes. In the first three seconds, we already have made up our mind. And then we ask ourselves, are we judging the person already? Can we say, even though he doesn't look that smart, I still want to bless him. Now that is spending a will to follow God. If you do that, God is happy with you. And your life will show the glory of God. Your life will show the wonderful peace of God. And then people will be changed by you. And then many people will say, I see Jesus in your life. And then. Then you say, thank God, thank God, it's not me, it's Jesus, hallelujah. And don't say, oh, I have Jesus in me, I'm greater than they. Don't ever do that. So, God has handled my sins. I'm just sharing a few instances. Has done it many, many times. Sometimes I worry, and then God touched my heart. Don't worry. I'm in control. Everything is in my hand. I will fix it. Okay? Let us pray now. Everyone stand up and ask God to reveal to us the sins that we are facing right now. You know, sins are destructive. It will destroy our life one step at a time. It will destroy our whole life. So ask God. Come up. Come up. Oh, they just stand here. So everyone, you ask God, 
One is the one sin, the first sin I have to face right now. To ask God, oh Lord, help me. It could be lust, it could be anger, it could be rejection of someone, it could be laziness in the life, it could be negative feelings in ministry. Everybody close your eyes, please. Oh, Hallelujah. And ask God to help you to handle that sin right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us. We are all sinners. We all have sinned. Please help us to repent of our sins and hate the sin. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to bend our will according to, according to your will. Help us to bend our will to submit to you. Oh, and bless and be willing to bless the people we don't like. Oh, Lord Jesus, in our lives there's so much filth. And sin, Lord Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us and cleanse us and wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Now the homework for today is you go home and write how you handle the problem with one person or with one sin you have, okay? Today we'll talk about how to handle problems of people and of sin. So you go home and think about how to handle the problem and write that down. How to handle some problem with certain person. What are the steps you will take? How do you handle that? The steps you take. And also to overcome the sin. Okay? And then we keep praying now. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If, our, if your people all pray to you. And seek your face. Then we humble ourselves. And turn away from our wicked ways. Then you hear from heaven. You forgive our sins and you heal the land. Oh Lord Jesus. We have sinned in so many ways. Even in our ministry. That we have partiality. That we treat certain people a different way. That we do not have love, patience for some people. That we despise some people. Lord Jesus, help us to hate these sins. Help us to hate these sins and know that these sins are destructive. Help us to hate the sin of anger, of frustration. Oh. 